So let's take a moment to settle in on this rainy day when the earth is welcoming its sweet drops. On this day that maybe we found ourselves having some detours, getting here with a tree down a little up the road. Maybe it was a morning when you didn't even want to get out of bed, or maybe you just jumped up and were ready to go. But now we are here, so settle in and allow yourself to become fully present in the breath, in the body, in the mind, in the heart, with a completely open and receptive soul. Because no matter what you think brought you here or who brought you here, there is always something deeper going on, and that's the call of the soul to a deeper awareness, a deeper experience, a deeper knowledge. in the way this morning and just become a space, a container for spirit to reveal itself to you in the way that serves you most. you were going to be on the beach, maybe. I am Frankie Timmers, I'm the spiritual director here at Center for Spiritual Living Morristown, and we welcome each and every one of you to an experience that you may have never had before, especially if it's your first time, right? Because what we really are about is a powerful teaching that has existed for a hundred years called the Science of Mind, and we're about no matter who you are, where you come from, where you've been, what's happened to you. Not only is there hope, but there is reason to celebrate. So we know that together, right? We have uh, some special music with us today. And uh, Deva and Sharon did a workshop on Wednesday that some of you attended. But this is a little snippet of what uh, Sharon was inspired to use as her bio. A traveling gypsy bringing spiritual teachings through inspirational music to move your soul into its innate alignment. Isn't that amazing? That's Sharon. Yay! And Deva leads retreats and women's circles in the way of the sacred feminine. She is the author of Awakened Priestess, a new book that supports women to awaken to their innate wisdom, power, and intuition. And I want to show you something else because Sharon has two CDs, so you can take her with you wherever you go on your travels. Thanks for being here today. It's always great to have you. Thanks for having us. I have a little surprise. Once in a while, something comes in the mail, or I shouldn't say that. A lot of the time, something comes in the mail that I really am happy about. And you know, we don't get a lot of happy snail mail anymore, right? I still do. Something came in the mail that I didn't know anything about. And it's for you, too, and for Theo. This is your five-year pin of being a practitioner in Centers for Spiritual Life. This is so pretty. John. 
see. And this one's for Theo. I don't think Theo is here, so we'll give it to him later. Isn't that great? It just popped up in the mail. I didn't know it was coming. So uh, the other thing I want you to know before I start doing a spiritual mind treatment is we made a decision because so many people want to take the new Prosperity Plus program this summer, but we put it right the day that the last class finishes that I'm teaching, so we're moving it, which apparently means that all of you are going to want to take it because now it starts on July 12th. And what a cool thing to give yourself for the summer. It's a Thursday night class. So I want you to pick up this flyer. It's just that the date has been changed to July 12th. Michael, just make the temperature a little higher. Uh, we, I turned it really low. Air conditioning was on for the first time in a while. It's a little chilly in here, right? Just make it a little warmer. Just up arrow it to, I don't know, 72, 73. All right. There's more happening today. And I'll tell you about later, but um, in case I forget, just for a wave, I want to tell you about uh, a one-day retreat that we're doing this coming Saturday before I go on a little sabbatical. We're going to do an all-day retreat. We're going to take naps, important part of retreats. So we're going to do meditation and treatment and visioning and vision boarding, and we're just going to have some fun. It's just a one-day thing from 10 to 4, so I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Let's treat which is our word for spiritual mind treatment, which is our word for affirmative prayer, or prayer treatment as some call it. So I invite you to close your eyes and just hear this as your own words. Ah, right here, right now, there is no better place to be than in the breath, in the heart, in the mind, in the body, to be fully present, open, receptive to the grace that is available right here, right now which is simply the activity of the universal intelligence, the universal love that is everywhere, in everyone, everything, all the time. So each of us gets to awaken to that, not just today, but every day. And all of life, whether the ego mind agrees with this or not, is conducive to that awakening. So today we simply surrender to the experience at hand, we trust that life is revealing itself in ways that lift us up and remind us how amazing we are, how powerful we are, how anything and everything is possible with this powerful link we have to the universal mind by means of our own mind and to the universal heart by means of our own heart. And that today something happens that is a reminder of how truth takes hold of us inspires us, guides us, and heals us. And for that, as well as being part of this beautiful community, we are eternally grateful. And so it is. The wall, so you don't have to look at my butt. Oh, that's very lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. These ladies. So, it's the last Sunday in May, and the theme for this month is spiritual laws and how to use them. And you've missed a lot if you haven't been here for the last three Sundays. Actually, I'm kidding, you haven't really missed a thing, because all you have to do is keep reading that. As within, so without, right? That's how spiritual law works, that's how metaphysical principles work. And I'm always amazed at how resistant I can find myself be to that. And I'm also amazed how resistant human beings are to that. If we have like a, a knockdown, drag down fight with spiritual law, thinking we're going to win. We're not. And so the interesting thing about spiritual law is that the laws are invisible, just like the law of electricity is invisible. We can see the result of it, 
But the law itself is invisible. So universal laws, spiritual laws, are invisible. They are made visible by means of us. So the topic today is from unseen to the seen. What's very important is for us to remember, this is, I think, was shared by Mary Morrissey in Prosperity Plus, when she talks about how everything is created twice. First in the invisible realm, and then in the visible realm. The simplest way to explain that is this chair was an idea before it was actually made into a chair. Somebody had this idea to make it out of a certain wood. I'm not sure if it's wood, but I hope it is. Certain fabric on top of it, certain way the legs are, the way these little screws are on the side so they hook into it. That was first an idea. The same is true of everything in our lives. Everything in our experience. First is the thought, first it's an idea, and then it becomes form. That's true of any disease. That's true of any challenge. That's true of anything that you are experiencing in your life that is blowing your mind with excitement and happiness and joy. Because the law doesn't say, mm -hmm, here, but no, not there, because she doesn't really mean it. It is always true. So what we talk about most of the time then is how important it is for us to have a really clear vision of who we are and who we are here to be. So I was thinking about Memorial Day and not having been raised in this culture and in this country, I don't have the same upbringing with this holiday, but what I've noticed with a lot of people is that they just think of it as an extra day off. You know, I don't have to go to work tomorrow. And we forget that there is quite a depth to this holiday that for me creates a lot of conflict in my heart. The holiday was first called Decoration Day in 1868. Decades later, it became Memorial Day. And in 1971, it became a national, ho national holiday. I'm bringing in my phone because it wouldn't print right. How many people do you think so it's a, this, this whole acknowledgement of <coughs> Memorial Day, Decoration Day started during the Revolutionary War. How many people, how many Americans do you think have died since the Revolutionary War? War? Total all wars together since the Revolutionary War. 10 million. Mm, that's a high guess. <laughs> but it feels that way, right? 1.1 million. Which I think is low. So it talks about the Revolutionary War, and then goes into the War of 1812, Indian Wars, Mexican War, Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, Persian Gulf War, and the latest Global War on Terror, which is a total of almost 7,000 people. So that's a lot, right? It's about a million, let's say there's more, and each of us are responsible. Well, just think for a moment. How many of you want world peace instead of war? Most of you, right? And there's, of course, a whole story about why we have military, why people go to war. I mean, I have family that did 17 tours in Iraq. So I support parts of that. I understand it in the human world, right? And so, so we support peace, but if we support peace and we want peace, we have to look inside and end the war within. So we have to ask ourselves, what war is there going on within me? Is it with how I look at my body? Is it my diseases? Is it my relationship with people who have hurt and harmed me? Is it my opinion about other people, maybe in leadership? So each of us are responsible by creating peace, and it starts within. And so we have to look deeper instead of tending to point fingers, right? And so because as within, so without. So spiritual law is about what is mine to do? What is my participation in facilitating world peace? Am I an example of peace? 
And if not, what healing must I do within myself? The most important thing is that we become conscious, that we become aware. I recently read somewhere, which is so much our teaching, it said, what you give your attention to profoundly shapes you. What you give your attention to profoundly shapes you at a conscious and an unconscious level. So listen to this. And notice what you notice. I'm very ugly. So don't try to convince me that I'm a very beautiful person. Because at the end of the day, I hate myself in every single way. And I'm not going to lie to myself by saying there's beauty inside of me that matters. So rest assured, I will remind myself that I'm a worthless, terrible person, and nothing you say will make me believe that I still deserve love. Because no matter what, I am not good enough to be loved. And I'm in no position to believe that beauty does exist within me. Because whenever I look in the mirror, I always am as ugly as people say. Now I'm going to read it to you in reverse. Am I as ugly as people say? Because whenever I look in the mirror, I always know that beauty exists within me. And I'm in no position to believe that I'm not good enough to be loved. Because no matter what, I still deserve love. And nothing you say will make me believe that I'm a worthless, terrible person. So rest assured, I will remind myself there is beauty inside of me that matters. And I'm not going to lie to myself by saying I hate myself in any single way. Because at the end of the day, I'm a beautiful person. So don't try to convince me that I'm very ugly. Isn't that powerful? Read two ways. That's life, right? How do you read your story? Forwards or backwards? It's the same words, but a different story. How do you share about your challenges, your fears, your worries, your anxieties? How do you share the beauty of you? It behooves us to pay attention to how we think and speak about ourselves because everything is created twice, first by our thinking, and then it manifests in our experience. That's called the mental equivalent. And the mental equivalent works both ways. The way I think, I create my experience. My experience reflects how I'm thinking. So that's why it's so important for us to really have a vision for ourselves and to always be moving into the direction of that vision. And we support that with our spiritual practices. We specifically use the practice of spiritual mind treatment. And we remember that we must use these spiritual laws for good, for greater good, for ourselves and for each other. Just like the law of electricity, I plug in my dryer in the morning. I don't stick a hairpin in the plug. <laughs> because I know I'm going to get a different result. We have to start thinking that way. We have to think more deeply what we're thinking about and that our experience is a reflection of that. I came up with a new word. I'm going to contact Mary and Webster. <laughs> I haven't done research yet, so it might not be a new word, but it's a new word to me, law-identify. Isn't that a great word? <laughs> law-identify! What do I identify with? My beliefs? What somebody else is doing and saying? News I'm getting from a doctor or from a politician? What I'm reading in the newspaper? Or do I identify with the law and how it works in and through me? <coughs> reading the poem backwards or forwards? And then life is still a mystery. It's still a mystery. You can be doing all the right things, taking all the right classes, doing all the meditations and all the treatments, and reading all the books and eating all the healthy foods and doing all the exercises and it can still be a mystery where it all seems to fall apart. That is not something against us. We have to remember that that is for us to show us the truth. 
so that we may manifest it. And so there's something to celebrate. And today my invitation to all of us, including myself, is to freaking lighten up all of <laughs> We are way too serious. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe you don't believe me. But I just get way too serious about all this stuff. In the end, none of it matters. What matters is how I stand in it, what I do with it. And what I'm learning is I better lighten up, because otherwise the load gets too heavy. And I can't carry it anymore. And so we pay attention to take time to just relax, to bathe in the love that's available in the entire universe, to have compassion for ourselves and each other, to, to, to just remember that we're doing our best, and to have fun. Ernest Holmes says, when we realize that all the spiritual power there is is at our disposal, and that no matter how limited the viewpoint we may have had yesterday, with the limitations that follow that viewpoint, Today we can increase our field of aware, inward awareness. Then we make possible a greater influx of the divine through the human, that is, through our own thinking. What do you believe is possible? And if you're believing something impossible, make peace with it. Settle it for once and for all. Or just choose to change it. It's only a choice away. So we have the saying in our teaching, principle is never bound by precedent. No matter what is happening today or was happening yesterday, in spiritual truth, it makes no difference because anything and everything is possible when we use the power of our own mind and our own heart. What's important is that we have clarity around our vision for ourselves and each other. I believe that what's important is that I have a vision for myself that includes all others, because I'm not an island. We're in this together. So that means you have to know your why. Why are you alive? Why are you here? Why have you carnated at this time in history as the person that you are. If you don't know, pick something and do it boldly in expressing it. Because so many people are going, I don't know what my vision is, I don't know what my vision is, I don't know what my purpose is, I, don't, I keep affirming it and you will definitely get the answer. <laughs> pick something. I'm here to be love in action is always a good one. <coughs> I'm here to be peace in action is a really good one considering what we're experiencing regarding war since the beginning of time. Thich Nhat Hanh, I bought this picture from him, right under his hand, the Vietnamese Buddhist monk. Cost me $300. They were fundraising. They're not, they're not shy. He's painting them $300, painting them $300, I'll take that one. Even if you're sure, check it again. It says, that's hanging right in my office. I see it a gazillion times a day when I'm here. Even if you are sure, check it again. Sometimes we're sure about someone or something, and it's not serving us because it's adding to the wars of the world, the wars in between people right around the corner from where we live. Check it again, even if you're sure. Check it from spiritual principle. Check it from your greater vision. Check it from your higher purpose. I came out right. Check it from who you want to be. Check it from what you love. Check it from what you've learned as a spiritual being. Check it from the beautiful music that you might hear. Think twice. Think again. The beauty is that you all can already because you're already a celebration. You got here today. That's a big deal. That means that you had to get out of bed, you had to dress yourself, maybe put on a little makeup and a few bling things. 
you had to walk to your car or whoever picked you up. You had to drive or, or be grateful somebody drove you. You had to probably have a little breakfast, maybe a little caffeine. Thank you, God, for my first cup of coffee. It's the best part of my day. <laughs> it's a prayer every morning. I'm so grateful. I think it's important that we take that every step of the way. Maybe your first kiss this morning. Maybe it was a lick from your cat or your puppy. I don't know. Maybe it was a thought that, oh, it's raining again. And then you go, thank you, universe, for making our earth so green, because I don't know a prettier place right now than beautiful New Jersey. Whatever people say about New Jersey, I don't know, it ain't true. <laughs> because when I hear the birds singing in the morning and I look outside my window and I see 50 shades of green, I'm happy. <laughs> so really think about how much there is to celebrate and to feel that light ease everything in your path. When we go from seriousness, it's more difficult to see what's possible. When we go from lightness of being, anything and everything is possible. So we all can come from a higher level of integrity, right? We all can come from a place that is more truth-filled, and more love-filled, and more grace-filled. Everything is created twice. First, by means of ideas and thoughts. So think twice and allow yourself to really choose what you want to think about. I want to close with something from this book, which is our book of the month for two more days, four more days. It's in the bookstore, in case you want to know. And it's on page 246, Releasing Your Invisible Spiritual Power. Everything in nature is an individualization of one coordinating life, one presence, and one law of being. Our minds have become so filled with things which contradict this that even the truth has to await our recognition. We must learn to become consciously aware of the divine presence and the divine power. The wholeness of truth, of love, and of reason, instead of dwelling on negative thoughts, let us dwell on peace and joy, discover the power of the invisible spirit working in and through us now, and lay hold of this realization with complete certainty. This book has a gazillion prayers in it, so if you don't know how to do that, Read this book, but I'm going to have a little exercise I'm going to do it. So repeat after me. I know, I know that I'm a perfect being now. That I am a perfect being now. Living under perfect conditions. <laughs> living under perfect conditions. Knowing that spirit alone is real. Knowing that spirit alone is real. I know there is one power. I know there is one power which acts and reacts in my experience. Which acts and reacts in my experience. In my body. In my body. And in my thoughts. And in my thoughts. For good. For good. I know that this recognition establishes. I know that this recognition establishes. Through law. Through law. Harmony in my experience. Harmony in my experience. Prosperity. Prosperity. A sense of happiness. A sense of happiness. Peace. Peace. Health. Health. And joy. And joy. Today I hold communion. Today I hold communion. With this invisible presence. With this invisible presence. Which peoples the world. Which peoples the world. With the manifestations of its life. With the manifestation of its light. Its light. Its light. And its love. And its love. I withdraw the veil. I withdraw the veil. Which hides my real self. Which hides my real self. And draw close to spirit within me. And draw close to spirit within me. That is in everything and in everyone. That is in everything and in everyone. I accept everything. I accept everything. That belongs to this spirit. That belongs to this spirit. I claim everything. I claim everything. 
everything that partakes of its nature. That partakes of its nature. And so it is. And so it is. And so it shall forever be. And so it shall forever be.